Um, what you see in the view here is my warping frame for weaving and um, the back bar, the back beam of um, about a 20 inch backstrap loom. Now I'm mentioning this because um, I think as materials um, supplies become harder and harder to get because I do think that's going to happen. Um, we may want to be weaving our own things. Now, a lot of people do weaving for um, using their hand spun yarns to make clothes and very pretty, um, beautiful items. We may need utility items, which is why I'm setting this up today. Um, I need to. Um, in our area, it's still very difficult to get some supplies. You can't get bleach, um, pine saw, laundry detergent at the local stores. Um, one, one woman who goes to all three of the local stores said it's been over a month be, um, since any of the stores had any bleach, which is kind of ridiculous in a pandemic that we can't get bleach. So I bought some um, from um, like an office supply store. I bought a case of bleach. Now, the other thing that I have trouble getting is paper towels. So yes, I have to switch. Instead of spinning wool, um, I have to switch to spinning cotton and making my own paper towels and rags. So maybe not everybody is going to do this. Maybe you live in a city and there are more store choices. Um, this is July. Uh, the pandemic started technically in March. And we still can't get supplies here. So um, I'm going to be weaving rags. I'm going to use a backstrap loom. And the reason I have several looms, this one, um, using a backstrap loom, in between, if I had to, in between each project, I can throw these dowels right into a tub of bleach and completely disinfect them. Um, will I need to do that? I don't know. But I can if I need to. Much more easily than I can disinfect one of my um, table looms. Or even the white plastic loom. The drawback to the pipe loom, which is the white plastic loom, is that it only makes fabric about 44 inches long. And if I'm gonna do this, I'd rather have one project going at a time and try to do it fairly quickly. So I can maybe spin a few ounces in the morning, set the twist, and then the next afternoon be weaving that into cloth. So the warping frame sits there and as you can see I have the back beam attached to it and about 10 feet away over here um, this is the front beam which would go with a backstrap uh, belt around my waist these are about 10 feet apart and the reason I'm doing this normally I do like a six foot length but I'm going to do 10 feet, and the way that I set this up, if you've seen any of my other weaving or um, loom warping videos, I'll have the heddle in the middle on the ground, and I can run the warp from here through the heddle to the back beam, through the heddle to the front beam. Um, it's a, a very fast way to warp a backstrap loom and thread the heddle at the same time. I'm using a rigid heddle instead of string heddles. So this will give me um, a 20 inch wide, 10 feet long cotton project. And um, I am a little depressed because I was all set to be spinning my wool. And um, even though I love cotton, and for years I said I preferred to spin cotton, um, you know, I guess uh, the pandemic is changing things and I'm just annoyed about it. So um, I'm making soap, I'm making face masks, 
and now I'm going to be spinning rag, spinning cotton for rags. Um, because everything is going to have to, I think, continually be disinfected. So it's something you can think about whether you've ever woven or not. Um, there are resources online that talk about um, backstrap weaving. It's very simple to do. This is kind of a big deal to have a, a warping um, frame and uh, to do it this way. There are many ways to warp um, a backstrap loom. One is to just put uh, two sticks in the middle of two further away sticks and do a figure eight through the sticks and then your end beam and your front beam go through one each of the ends and your cross or your two sheds is in the middle. There are many ways to do it. Um, I can also do it in the house by tying uh, one beam to like the back of a chair and moving another chair however many feet away and doing the same thing I'm doing outside, inside. So it's something to think about. Uh, backstrap weaving is a wonderful skill that um, if you know how to weave and it's very basic, plain weave for the most part, you can make your own fabric. And once you can make your own fabric, you can make your own clothes, bedspreads, uh, rags, anything you need. Okay, I have started to warp this. Um, as you can see, I've got, this is a cone of uh, sport weight cotton string that if I can find the link to it, I'll put the link in the information section. Um, it ends up being about $30 for a cone, but it's a very big cone. And I've been able to warp several projects with that. Um, and what I do, if you don't want to look at the other videos, I start by tying one end here. I go up this way. I come through um, the longer space of the heddle. I go up to the back beam. I bring it as a loop around the beam. So it's underneath the beam. I go back through a longer um, space there. And then to the front beam, but at that point I tie it off. So it's not really a continuous warp. Every other warp gets tied off. And it gives you a double strand warp. So now when I do the next one, I'll bring it up around the beam and go up holding a loop like this in my hand and just pulling more string out of the ball of string as I go. But what I have to do after it's fully warped is um, untie the front beam or cut it and then finish threading the heddle by pulling one of the two warps. You can see each one is two strands because I'm using a, a loop. But then after um, I'm, I've gone all the way across, I have to untie the front beam and pull one of each of those strands through the smaller hole. And that will be finishing um, threading the loom, uh, the heddle. Um, and at that point, you're ready to weave. And um, if I get a chance, I'll bring out um, a smaller backstrap loom that's already set up. The um, other thing you see here is Miss Coco Bean. And this is actually a perfect day to do this. This is July. It's been extremely hot. Um, today is cool. She actually has a sweater on. Um, now, I don't know why she's whining. Coco, what's the matter? Um, but this will work out very well if she remembers that I'm standing right here next to her. Um, because this takes me at the most an hour. And normally what happens is um, Coco's on her lead and she's going back and forth in the middle of it and getting under and over the warp and everything. So her being in her pen is actually a good thing. 
Now, there are two behaviors I don't really see from her. One is the whining, and I don't see that there was a squirrel or anything over there. And the other is um, pawing at the crate. Hey, don't, don't do that. Now, she, it's not that she, she never eats grass, never. Um, my son's dog has a habit of eating grass. Coco doesn't. So I think, um, again, going, uh, coming out of the surgery, she's, she's just a little bit odd sometimes. Um, she's much better today than she has been. Okay, here is um, one loom already set up and I'm hanging it from one of the bird feeder hooks. Um, this warp is about maybe six feet, five and a half, six feet. And you can see once you get it over a back beam, you um, can, you put another beam in front of it to hold it tight, tie those well. Then you can also tie it here just to keep it organized. And I don't know why that one or two are loose. Um, but then you can add tension sticks and tie those as well to keep the tension. But uh, the real tension is put on the loom when, um, and this just has a string belt, but when you back up, you have the string belt around your waist. The front beam is across your stomach or abdomen. Um, this is a heddle I had made out of clay, scopey clay. Um, and you just weave. It's so convenient. Um, and as long as you have a plant hook or something in the house, you can hang this up over a door. There are door hooks you can get. I have um, a big hook that clamps on a table. and Or you can just hang it on a doorknob and um, just go ahead and weave. It's one of the um, best, easiest, cheapest ways of weaving. So this one is set up to be about eight inches wide. And the one I've been working on over there, um, like I said before, will be about um, almost 20 inches wide. I probably have it um, set for about 18 inches wide. And actually, that one over there is 12 feet long. So luckily, um, I have that, um, a little bit of extra footage there. What I might be able to do is, once that's finished, um, every 12 inches, stitch across the fabric um, with a sewing machine that'll go to 30 stitches per inch, and then just trim it, uh, cut it right off. In other words, um, put two lines of stitching across sideways the fabric, and in between the two lines, cut the fabric. I should end up with 12 rags. And the that one, warping that one, is taking probably almost six ounces, maybe five ounces of cotton yarn, sport weight. This one took a lot less. So, um, you know, if you are also finding it difficult to get supplies, um, if you want to just keep active, this is great if you have kids that have nothing to do. Um, you could help them set up the loom and have them make all the rags for the house. But keep in mind, once you know how to do this, then you move on to, um, there are all different um, pickup methods with backstrap weaving that you can learn if you want to. You can also switch to your better wools and make beautiful fabrics. Um, you know, it, there's a lot that this can lead to. And it's simple over and under weaving once you're weaving. While I had these out in different stages of either working on or um, getting them set up to work on, I thought I'd show you the different um, ways you can use a backstrap loom. This is one that has 8 inch um, front and back beams. Uh, made out of dowels, and I made the heddle. I think I had um, taken a picture of that yesterday. Um, and I, instead of hand spun cotton, I started um, it's uh, Red Heart acrylic 
wildflower yarn on that. Um, most of these are going to be rags, but it's going to take me longer to spin the cotton. Um, so that's that one. This is one of the easiest backstrap looms to start with, and this is the Harrisville Designs uh, belt loom. And the reason this is easy is you see how it's tied um, to the playpen here, because what you do is you um, tie a knot in your warps, put it over something like a doorknob or a hook or something, um, and then just run the length down here and they have this ingenious design where you loosen the wing nuts and pull your warp in between the two bars. Very easy to set up. It comes with a plastic heddle, narrow. It's like a, um, I think they call it their belt loom. Um, and then I had made the same thing using my tree, parts of my tree and uh, a heddle I had bought. So there's another one. And the, the really good thing about backstrap looms is you can make the warp as long as you want. Um, my Harrisville Designs um, Easy Weaver B, which is about 16 inches wide, um, six and a half to seven feet is as long as I can get a warp on there easily. And then this is the three foot loom that um, the heddle is completely threaded and I just have to tie the ends to the beam that's going to be um, in front of me. And I strapped it back on the warping frame. And now what I'm going to do with these, um, the big one especially, as many of you know, the dog's been sick, and um, the swaying of the loom in the house tends to spook her a little bit. And, um, I mean, she knows it's not going to hurt her, and she's used to it, but right now I don't necessarily want to be doing that. So what I'm going to do is, once I get this tied on to the front beam, um, if I'm not working on it, I'm going to roll it up and uh, tie it right to the warping frame and leave it out at night. And I'll probably put a piece of tarp over it to protect the heddle. And um, basically that's why they're out here, is because uh, today I have one more I was just threading the heddle of. And um, it's such a nice day today. I was going to bring the dog out and put her in the playpen and get as many of these done as I can. Um, this one is only like a 12 inch wide warp so even though it looks like a lot because it's 12 inches, uh, 12 feet long, it goes very quickly and the belt looms this width goes very quickly. Um, that has hand spun cotton on it but I may change it um, to either acrylic or wool because spinning the cotton takes time so at the least even if I don't finish these today um, they're all set up I will have had five looms set up ready to go to just weave um, rags <laughs>